Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday night uh, Bible study time. I have uh, I've asked the deacons, or at least the ones that could, uh, to say a word uh, in our study tonight and, and to uh, just share some thoughts on how the Lord has encouraged them and helped them uh, during this uh, past few weeks as we went through this pandemic time. And So I just wanted to kind of uh, give them a time to be seen by you and, and to hear from you, uh, for you to hear from them. And I also wanted to share a few verses of Scripture. I'd ask them to pick out some verses or a specific passage that uh, have meant much to them over these past few weeks. And, and of course, there have been many that I have uh, that I've looked to and gained strength from and found encouragement from and, and uh, just strength. Uh, but mostly, I uh, just want to acknowledge that it all comes from the Lord. He gives us His Word and He provides us His help if we uh, will be sensitive to do the things that he's asked us to do. And so, uh, with that said, uh, a couple of things uh, beginning that have crossed my mind even in the last few minutes is uh, just thinking about for God to love the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, we're so blessed, all of us. There's not a person on the face of this earth uh, that's not blessed. Uh, regardless of the situation or circumstances you may find yourself in, if you can find your way to be sensitive to the Lord Jesus Christ's leadership and the Spirit of God, as the Word of God is made known to you, uh, you can be blessed and find uh, your way through this life and beyond into eternity. So I just uh, am grateful for the Lord's Word and thankful for the Lord Jesus Christ and for His words that He gives us to guide, give guidance through each and every day. I think about what's recorded there in John chapter 3, verse 30, where John wrote, He must increase and we must decrease. And what John was saying is that the Lord must increase in our lives and we must decrease. In other words, we have to give Him uh, not just part of ourselves, but our whole selves. And that's a challenge, it's a battle that we go through from day to day and will throughout the course of our lives. But uh, that's the, the mandate that's been given to us, that He must increase in our lives and we must decrease. Uh, just to share a couple of verses of scripture uh, that have really meant a lot to me over these past few weeks and really throughout the course of my ministry. I think about where Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17. He said, But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me. I pray that that, that is what has been able to be allowed to happen in my life these past few weeks. That uh, I know the Lord has stood with me. He's given me His grace and His peace and a, a sweet calm that I can't explain. It truly is the peace that passes all understanding. But I pray above all things in my life that, that it's been the message that God uh, laid upon my heart to be preached these last few weeks. And I hope they've been encouragement to you. I think about what Paul said to the church of Corinth in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. He said, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect. Uh, your strength is made perfect in weakness, or Paul was saying that his strength was made perfect in the Lord's strength. So uh, think about where he wrote to the Philippians. I've really studied a lot through Philippians these past few weeks, and just thankful to know that God's on his throne and he takes care of his own. And Paul said, but God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and grace in Christ Jesus. And the words of Jesus himself, he said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be feeble. Um, just so thankful again. God has blessed us so much in so many ways. I just want to encourage you to continue to trust in the Lord with all, your, all of your heart. Lean not into your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. Just stay true to the Word of God. Just know that what the Proverbs um, teaches us, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, uh, and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh, these things are important for us to live the most abundant life that God has possible to give us. And when we think about wisdom, wisdom calls out to everyone. Everyone can have the wisdom of God if they want it, if they pray for it, if they cry out for it, if they search the scriptures and be sensitive to the Spirit of God. Uh, wisdom is something we can have and it's something that we need. Uh, wisdom is the fear of God, it's plain and simple. It's the fear of God that brings security. Uh, it makes clear what is right in God's eyes, and that's the most important thing of all, regardless of what other people think or what other people say. Uh, we should be wise as we walk on this earth and realize that He will give us a clear path to know what is right in His sight. And then uh, wisdom also uh, helps us to know truth. 
and it reveals evil. It leads us to success. I don't think there's anybody that would say, I don't want to succeed. But if we want to truly succeed, we have to be, with, uh, be wise. And the only way we can have wisdom is to know God and fear Him. Uh, wisdom brings happiness. Uh, it makes life real and enjoyable. And it truly feeds our souls. And so I pray that uh, this time that we have together tonight in study and just hearing uh, from uh, the deacon body, that it will be a blessing to you. Hopefully, above all things, you know the Lord and you have peace with Him and you're heaven -bound. I hope that you have a blessed time. I want to say thank you to our deacon body as they pray, as they continue to pray, as we were uh, trying to get back to in-house worship. Uh, we're meeting and we're going to be announcing uh, later this week uh, our return and how we're going to do it. So I just ask for your continued prayers and cooperation and just be ready to work for the Lord. And just, uh, Again, thank you for being the church, being faithful, and God bless you. As we've been going through this pandemic the last couple of months or so, I've seen and experienced a lot of fear. I guess the thing that got me to thinking about this thing called fear is a passage in John chapter 9 that I was reading recently. And it's the account of Jesus giving sight to the man that was born blind. In verses 20 through 22, we find this account. And this is after Jesus had healed him. He said, His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son, that he was born blind. But what, by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He's of age. Ask him. He shall speak for himself. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. So actions have consequences, and they were afraid of being put out of the synagogue. During this time of pandemic, governments at all levels have issued stay-at-home orders except for essential workers while also allowing people to go about activities that are necessary to live, such as going to the grocery store and things of that nature. They were enforcing these orders through the threat of fines and other means, and so for the most part, people obeyed. So I call that enforcement through fear. But looking in the Bible, and this is for the Christians, there are several fear nots, and we're going to look at about three of those here for just a minute. In Genesis chapter 26 and verses, or verse 24, God told Isaac, said, Fear not, for I am with thee, and will bless thee, and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And this was during the time that Isaac was trying to find a place to settle, after the herdsmen of Gerar were not allowing them to use the water from the wells that he had dug. In 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse 13, it said, And Elijah said to her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and thy son. This was in a time of famine. Elijah had been fed by the ravens and drunk from the brook. But the brook had dried up, and God had sent him to this widow. And all she had left was a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil. But she did as Elijah asked. And God multiplied the uh, flour and oil, and they ate for many days. In Matthew chapter 10, verses 30 and 31, the Bible said, But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. This gives us an indication of how important we are to God. I think the thing that we need to remember is fear is natural. But we should not let it control everything we do. We must remember as Christians, as Paul told the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 5 8, 
He said, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. We have the assurances from the Bible. That does not mean that we need to go out and act foolishly and recklessly during this pandemic. We must be reasonable with our actions. What is reasonable for you will probably be different than what is reasonable for me. As one person said, I trust in God, but I wear my seatbelt. I trust in God, but I lock my doors at night. Fear not, but take reasonable precautions and stay safe. Fulton Bridge Baptist Church, along with all other churches over the nation, has been struggling with something they've never or been a, over a century since they've had to deal with anything like it. Closing our physical doors here at the church has been very challenging. But our pastor has been working to uh, compensate for that by having online services. And that has gone very well for us. And now he and the deacons have begun to consider when and how how quickly we can safely come to some semblance of, of uh, in-house worship. Something we're, we're struggling with now. Brother Mike knows well how difficult it is for the individuals who are unable to assemble and draw strength from each other, how hard that is on them. So he suggested that some of us share some scriptures that we have leaned to and thought about during the time of this pandemic. One of the first scriptures that I want to talk about is Romans 8, 28. It says, We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. purpose. God's timing is perfect. We never may never know why certain things happen here on this earth while we're, while we're living. But as Christians, we know that we must trust God. Now, trusting God doesn't mean sometimes uh, giving a smile, looks like a fake smile, sort of, that tries to imply that I'm really showing a lot of faith. Sometimes trusting in God is crying out to Him in pain. And I think that's what has certainly happened in the last few weeks as uh, this country and the world has been facing this disaster. The second scripture I'd like to read is in Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of righteousness. God never asked us to figure this out all on our own. He just asked us to trust Him, to recognize His leadership and His sovereignty. And truly, we can believe His word when He says He will never leave nor forsake us. Times are tough now for all of us, but choosing faith over panic is where the real peace resides. Corey Ten Boom said, it takes the same amount of energy to worry as it does to pray. One leads to peace, the other leads to panic. Choose wisely. Should we be wise this tumultuous time? Most definitely. Should we be careful and cautious? Most definitely. Most of all, we should be strong and steady in our faith. Good evening. We met here today to discuss the, the future of this church about opening up the doors back to a, a worship service. And you look down in front of us and we see a wreath right there signifying Memorial Day from all of our fallen soldiers, men and women who have put on the uniform of this great country of ours. All right. We as Christians have to put on the same armor. As it's mentioned in the Bible. 
President Franklin Roosevelt once said, we have nothing to fear but fear itself, as Bobby stated. The fear is fear itself. This pandemic that we're in, when it first broke out, we, did, we didn't know anything about it. We still know very little. We chose to close the services for the protection of the people. <clears throat> While this time that we've been closed, if you go to the scripture, John 3, 17, where it says, For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. What does that tell us? We can't save ourselves. Only God can. Only God. We look back what the, uh, President Roosevelt once said. What does Donald Trump say? He wants us back in church. He wants his country back on his knees praying again. We can pray at home. We can pray in our prayer closets. We don't have to meet at church. And Roosevelt once said, fear itself. This pandemic has has stricken all of us. It has brought this country to its knees, basically, economically and almost financially. It's closed churches, something that I thought never would ever happen in the United States of America. But yet it has. Here we are now on the verge of reopening. And as we do, we have to stress the safety of our people. We have young people that may have underlying health disorders. We have old people that does. We don't know what the, what the case may be. Did we want to close the services? No, we didn't. Do we want to open it back up? I go back to fear itself because I fear, are we doing the right thing? Only God knows. We know that the scripture says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh under the Father but by me. My favorite verse. We can't come to God no other way. We've been worshiping the Social media, people are still being reached. People are still being saved. If we open back up, which we're going to, we have got to be extra, extra careful not to contaminate healthy people. It only takes one. One person is all it takes. And we can wipe out a congregation. I'm not saying that to scare people. I'm just telling you it's the truth. And that's why we closed the church in the beginning. No, did we want to? No. Did we have to? Yes. For the safety of our own people. But no matter whether the church is open or closed, God's still in power. He is the way. He is the life. He is the only way. Thank you. Hello, I just wanted to share a, a verse and some thoughts with you and say a prayer with you today. In Psalms 34, 4, it says, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Uh, this is a time when we're, we have a lot of fears. And uh, it's been very easy to, to just get real caught up in my daily activities and try to forget everything that's going on. But uh, the best way to go about it is to just seek out the Lord, to go to Him in prayer. And uh, with all the fears that we have, we can find comfort and rest in Him. We may not have all the answers, and we may not feel like we're doing things exactly right, but if we just take it to the Lord, He'll comfort us. Amen. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You for this day. We thank you for the opportunity we have to come together in, uh, as a church body and in any way, shape, or form and be able to, to worship you, even though it's a little bit different in the last few weeks. Uh, Lord, we just uh, lift up the decisions that have to be made. We pray that your will be done. 
Lord, as we seek this out, we, we pray that you guide us and protect us in everything that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good evening. Just wanted to say a few words here. Brother Mike has asked us if we would to get up and say a little bit of what we've done through this pandemic. And uh, when Brother Mike was speaking back before they even closed the borders, when they was talking about the virus over in China and how bad it was over there, Brother Mike was speaking and he read a verse in the Bible and it was Psalms 91 verses 10 and 11. And it says, There shall be no evil before thee, neither shall there be a plague come, come nigh to thee dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, and to keep thee in all their, their ways. So with that verse right there, I went to that a lot during this time. Everybody's talking about fear. I've thought about it. I thought, you know, what they're telling me, how bad it is, if I get it, what's going to happen, etc. And I look at this right here, and I put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's told us, he's given us verses right here to tell us, if we put our trust in him, stay close to him, no evil will come before you. So over these last few days, that's what I have, or a few weeks, that's what I have done. I put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, which I'd already trusted him many years ago. And that I just felt confident I, that um, everything would be okay. And that um, as long as I kept the Lord Jesus Christ first in my life, everything would be fine. Thank you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, just thank you for this day. Just thank you for everything you've done for us, God. God, just thank you for this church. Just thank you for the people. And just, just thank you for everything that you've done for us, God. Just thank you for all the many blessings that you've uh, spoken upon us, God. Just thank you for keeping us safe through this trying time, God. God, just uh, be with us as we continue to work and strive to get back in your house, God. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.